families. It makes him cry and shake to see death. Because you see, if Jesus was the Son of God, as the Bible says he was and that he is, then he knew all about the creation of humanity. I mean, he was there. He knows that the intention is for us to live, not to die. He knows that death only exists because of sin, Adam and Eve and the serpent and all the consequences of that. And so he's truly bothered by death. Death sucks. It's a part of our existence that does not belong. We were made for life. Death is only here because of sin, and so it's an enemy that must be defeated. You and I, we were made to live. This world has fallen. Death is something we're all going to have to experience. We'll all know the pain and loss of losing loved ones. But don't let anyone tell you that death is natural or that it's good. Never let anybody tell you that death is a friend because it isn't. Death is a real, relentless, pernicious pain inflicting on all who come in contact with it. Enemy. It's a pitiless, merciless bully. Death sucks. And as Jesus stood there that day in the midst of that funeral, he knew that his friend Lazarus was going to live again, but he also knew that death is an aberration in God's good creation, and he was outraged by it. It made him shake and tremble and weep. Jesus was mad. He was mad as hell. And I think as he stood there that day, Jesus was deciding that it was time for somebody to stand up to death. And that's my second observation from this story. And it's the good news. Jesus stood up to death. He's the victor over the enemy, death. That's the focal point of this story. When Jesus comes to Martha and identifies himself as the resurrection and the life, he's saying that he is the key to beating the pain that is death. He tells her, He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The reason Jesus came to earth was to defeat the enemy of death, to overcome its power upon us. He's saying that by believing in him, there's life after death. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. But more than that, he's saying that within him, there is also the power to overcome death, to remove its sting in the assurance that death will not have the final say. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then just so it would be clear that he was not merely talking, Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb and he uttered those simple words. Lazarus, come out. He demonstrated in a concrete and tangible way that he is the solution to death. You know, it's interesting that if you read through all the stories of Jesus, you will never find him preaching a funeral sermon. Every funeral he ever attended, he broke up by raising the deceased back to life. There's Lazarus in this story. There's, there's the story of Jairus and his 12-year-old daughter who Jesus took by the hand and said, Talitha kum, and brought her back to life. There's, there's the story of the widow in Nain. Jesus just appears to be just passing through when this funeral procession comes by. This widow's son is dead and Jesus stops and raises him back to life. And then there's his own funeral. Just a few weeks after Jesus raised Lazarus, he took death on directly, carrying the burden of all the sins that make death necessary in the first place. Jesus picked up a heavy wooden beam and he walked to the top of a barren hill where angry men drove spikes through his wrists and ankles and hoisted him up to the top of a post where he was left to suffer and strangle under the merciless sun. And on that cross, Jesus wrestled with death. 
He fought and struggled with it until the breath of life was gone and the blood was poured out and his broken body was taken down and laid in a cold, dark tomb. And then three days later, Jesus walked out of his own grave because death cannot compete with the life that is found in Jesus. He is the resurrection and the life. Death sucks. It's the enemy. It's your enemy. It's my enemy. It's Jesus' enemy. But Jesus stood up to death. He went to the cross. He died. And then he kicked the bully in the knees. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 56 says, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus stood up to death. Death doesn't have to get the final say. If we recognize Jesus, as Martha did, as the Son of God who's coming into the world, we are promised that though we die, yet shall we live. We are promised that the final say will go to the one who is the resurrection and the life. The one who stood before a dead man's tomb and called Lazarus, come out. The one who looked death in the eye and then walked out of his own grave. I hate death. Death sucks. My dad is dead and I'm mad about it. But to death I say this. You can have my father now, but you can't keep him. I know how the story ends. You don't win. Somebody stood up to you and you lost. Jesus has beaten you. The sting is gone. The grave has been defeated. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He's the champion of the cross. He's the risen son of man. And nothing, absolutely nothing can stand between us and our Savior. Not cancer, not sorrow, not sickness, not Satan, not the gates of hell. Death, you lose. You suck, and you lose. I hate you, and you lose. You can have my dad now, but you cannot keep him. Someday he's walking out of that grave just like Lazarus. Just like his Lord. You are the enemy, you are a bully, and you've lost. Swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory in Jesus Christ. And so the question for us is the same question Jesus posed to Martha. Do you believe this? This really is a matter of life and death. The Bible teaches that every person must give an account of their life after they die. It's sort of an exit interview with God. And according to what Jesus says in this story, the main question that will be asked to us by God is this. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Did you put your faith in Jesus alone as Savior and Lord of your life? That's what he's going to someday ask of every person in this room. That's what he asked my father. That's what every human on the planet needs in order to live. Even though we die, in order to have eternal spiritual life, we need to trust in Jesus. I'd be foolish to think that everyone here has placed their faith in Jesus Christ and has gotten his free gift of eternal life. But the Bible says you can do that today. A simple prayer can express the desire of your heart to trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation. He will today forgive you of your sins so that you will not perish but have eternal life with Him. He will take over your life, be Lord and Master and Savior. That's what John 11, 25-26 says. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So I urge you to believe in the one who stood up to and beat death. Death.